I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Welcome back. Hope forces are treating you well and not hitting you too hard. Pun intended. Uh, we are on Dynamics Unit 2. We're in third law of force pairs. All right, so we need to talk about a couple concepts and then I have a quick easy problem to do. And then we also have, uh, following this video, we have a third law pair of interacting blocks side by side. So also fits into this third law pair. All right, here we go. We're gonna come over here and I have a table terribly drawn. My colleague Beth is such a great artist and I am not, which is why I love physics. Everything can become a dot on a free body diagram. Anyway, I have this terrible drawing of a table and a book sitting on the table. Now, if we were to do the free body diagram, FBDs, we know what those are by now. They're not diseases. It's a visual picture of our forces. We would have of that book, if we were doing the FBD on the book, free body diagram, we would have normal up because that's the table pushing on the book. And then we would have force due to gravity down. And because that's not moving, it's at rest, these would be balanced and uh, that would be perfect. There would be absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is exactly how you would draw that. However, students tend to think these are third law pairs because they are opposite and equal of each other, but that is not the case. Third law pairs need to, first of all, you need to have only two objects that you're dealing with, only two. In this case, if you were looking at this, you would have the book, because that's the dot, you would have the table, because that's what's causing the normal force, and you have the earth pulling down on it, which is causing the force due to gravity. That is three objects. So that is not a, uh, a third law pair, okay? Third law pairs can only be two objects, and you have an opposite and equal force on those two objects only. So what is the third law pair? Well, there's actually two third law pairs here. So if I look at the book, we have that the table is pushing up on the book. That's the normal force. True story. <laughs> but the book, the third law pair, so the first, I'm gonna say the first third law pair, is that you have the table pushing on the, uh, pushing up on the book. Ooh, if I could write today, writing is so hard. Pushing up on the book. And then your third law pair is the book pushing down on the table. You have the book pushing down on the table. Writing is so hard. All right, so look, we only have a table and we have a book. We have opposite because the table's pushing up, the book's pushing down. There you go, that's a third law pair. And you're like, but wait a minute, when we do the free body diagram, there's no book pushing up on the table. True, there's not, because key concept on free body diagrams is that you only put the forces acting on the object, not what the object is doing. So yes, the object, the book, because this was the book, is pushing down, but we don't add that because that's what the object is doing. Free body diagrams are only forces that are acting on the object, okay? All right, now what's the second? You said, hey, there's a second third law pair. Yeah, and there is. All right, and this one is a little hard to wrap your brain around. It's kind of mind blowing. All right, second thir uh, third law pair here is that the book, the earth is pulling down on the book. So earth, earth is pulling down on the book. Guess what? The book is pulling up on the earth. It's kind of mind blowing, but true. The book is pulling up on the earth. So look at this. You have earth and book, book and earth, two objects, Earth's pulling down, the book's pulling up. Opposite and equal reactions. All right, now, yes, the earth is pulling down on the book and the book's not gonna move, but um, the book is also pulling up on the earth. Now, 
the earth is so massive that small things with small mass pulling up are not going to affect its rotation at all or its path around the sun at all. Uh, so a book is it? So uh, we get we get that uh, it's really not going to affect it and what, we don't notice it. So that's why we really don't realize and recognize that that's happening. All right, there you go. So the earth is pulling down on the book while the book is pulling up on the earth. And there are your two third law pairs that are acting on that book. All right, and we now know that normal up and force due to gravity down while also equal and opposite are not third law pairs because that is three, table, book, earth. Three objects and that's not how third law pairs work, just two objects. Perfect, now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do a quick, quick, uh, problem, we've got a 90 kilogram mom and a 60 kilogram daughter. They push against each other on, on ice skates on the ice. We're going to ignore that friction. And if mom accelerates, which is why we're on ice because it's so small anyway, if mom accelerates backwards at a 0 0.50 meters per second squared uh, rate of acceleration, what is the daughter's acceleration? Well, here we go. The force that the mom puts on the daughter is equal to the force that the daughter puts on the mom. Wow, okay, so and we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So for mom, that would be mass of mom times acceleration of mom is going to equal the mass of the daughter times the uh, acceleration of the daughter. You could also say it this way. You could say that the force of mom, daughter, minus the force of daughter on mom is going to equal zero. It's going to be a net force of zero because they're equal in opposite directions. But I think it's easier to see it this way, to say, hey, those are equal. The force mom puts on daughter is equal to the force daughter puts on mom, and we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So now we just simply put, if we're looking for that acceleration of the daughter, you can divide both sides by mass of the daughter. I'm just going to go ahead and plug and chug here to save some time. Uh, the mass of mom was 90. Her acceleration was 0.5. Mass of the daughter was less mass, so she's 60. And her acceleration is what we're solving for, and that comes out to be 0.75 meters per second squared. Uh, in other words, she is accelerating faster than mom. Makes sense because she has less mass. I used to put two students on those scooters you used to use in like elementary and, uh, and I'd take the big football player and put him on a scooter and then the smallest person in the room in, on a scooter and have them push against each other with their feet. And the, the football player would not move much because he's, he's like solid mass. He's got a lot of mass, solid muscle, I mean. And uh, the small one would accelerate back much faster because they had less mass. So she has less mass, accelerates more in the opposite direction while mom has more mass and accelerates slower. Thank you for watching and happy physicsing.